From the Von Osta Homesales.com studios, welcome to Theology on Tap, where along with Father Jason Adams, we discuss topics that matter to you and your Catholic faith. Uh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All wow. right, Father, you ready to start us off with a prayer today? Sure, this is the week of Father's Day, so uh, let's go ahead and pray to our Almighty Father. As we pray in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Good and gracious God, as we continue just to go about serving you, Lord, um, we know that this week, Lord, we we celebrate in a special way here in the United States, that of uh, Father's Day. So, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you bless all the men you've put in our lives, uh, our biological fathers, our spiritual fathers, and Lord, may we just follow the example of your heavenly Son and the one who you entrusted to help raise him as St. Joseph. And Lord, may what we all do always be for your glory and good as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, what's up, Ben? Hey, well, Father Jason, it's another time for another episode. Yeah. Yeah, so this week, something a little different. You are watching us today. But we get to interact with you during this uh, post, the, during this video. Whoa, a meta yeah, experience. Man. Yeah, okay. so Father Jason and I will actually be part of the audience this week because we're going on vacation. This week is going to be a vacation week what? for you, but we came into the studio and we have created this thing because we have an important topic this week. That's right. Yeah, fatherhood. We're talking about fatherhood because this Sunday is Father's Day Sunday, and we're extremely excited it is not because it's a week to shower us with dad things. That, <laughs> that, that's not the reason. But because we need to talk about dads. We need to talk about being a father. And we need to talk about what it takes to be a father. No, no, no exactly. So um, I just say, why don't we just go ahead and go straight into it. But right now, uh, since we are interacting with you, you can comment now where you watching us from. 
what are you doing right now? So besides watching us, so tell us what, what you're sipping and uh, where you're at as you're watching. As you see, uh, we're having right now the Modelo Especial. And I believe the way Alan put it to us is <laughs> we're drinking it because we're especial people, being dads. That's right. Except for Father Jason, sorry. Yeah, different, type different, different type of dad. Different type of dad. Different type of father. Dad. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, again, like Father Jason said, ask questions because, like we said just seconds ago, we're going to be part of the audience. So we will be sitting there watching, and we can comment and discuss as we go. And, and we're, we're hoping that uh, it's going to lead to some great discussion as this video and this talk goes on. Exactly. And right away, Ben, I just want to delve into, as we're talking about fatherhood, Let's just go straight into statistics. I think we had a lot of people like the segment we did early on in our show just talking about young adults and the importance of uh, families and praying together uh, and staying together and the values that play for a young adult. So let's talk about the role of a father. Yeah, and you mentioned some great statistics in that article that fatherhood leads to young adults practicing. Exactly, and I'm bringing up that survey right now. So that survey I once referenced, I, I got it all right here. So uh, every recorder can come back and watch. So right now, so where this survey I once referenced came from was back in 1994. The Swiss government uh, took some uh, data. They did a study, and they published it in the year 2000 in regards to how it, can, how it came to transmitting religious values and the faith through the family. And in short, the study revealed that it is the religious practice of the father, the father of the family, that determines future attendance, or absence at church. So uh, I don't see the sampling of how many people they survey, but looking at uh, the numbers they get from their data, uh, there were four realizations that they determined, the Swiss government. One, if both the father and the mother attend regularly, 33% of their children will end up as regular churchgoers, and 41% will end up attending, but irregularly. Only a quarter of their children would end up not practicing their faith at all. Now, if the father is irregular and the mother is regular, only 3% of the children would subsequently become perhaps regular churchgoers themselves, while a further 59% would become irregulars, and 38 would be lost. Now, if the father is non-practicing and the mother is regular, only 2% of children will become regular church worshipers, and 37% will attend irregularly, and over 60% of their children will be lost completely to the church. Now, what happens if the father is regular, but the mother's irregular or non-practicing? Amazingly, the percentage of children become regular goes up from 33 to 38% with the irregular mother, and up to 44% with the non-practicing. So this suggests that loyalty to the father's commitment grows in response to the perceived notion of a mother's laxity or indifference to religion. Now to sum all that up and put it in short, if a father does not go to church, no matter how faithful his wife's devotions are, only one child in 50 become a regular church worshiper. But if a father goes regularly, regardless of the practice of the mother, between two-thirds and three-quarters of their children would become regular, would become church-goers in general, whether it's regular or irregular. And one of the reasons suggested for this distinction is that children tend to take their cues about domestic life from the mothers, while the conceptions of the world outside come from the dad. So if a dad takes seriously the message of faith to their children, then they're more likely to take that seriously. And I think that confirms, and we got some fathers with us here today, that the essential role of the father is being a spiritual leader, which we would argue is true fatherhood. Fathers are to love their wives as Christ loves the church, modeling the love of the father in their most importantly earthly relationship. And fathers are to care for their children as our father in heaven cares for us. And finally, fathers play a primary role in teaching their children about truth and reality, while the mothers uh, do a good job with that on a n natural, nurtural level. So, you gave great statistics <coughs> from that. Uh, from that. That's a lot, a lot to dissect. Uh, but I hope that with the rest of today's episode, that we prove those statistics of 
how to be that man, how how to be the dad that brings those kids to faith, and how to prove those statistics. And I know you mentioned 1994 with that article, mm-hmm. uh, but I've since attended a talk that brought, and I, and I, I probably need to go back and look at this specifically, but it was an article that was based in 2011, and the statistics are even greater in change now. Uh, the The increase in the dad participating actually has increased the number of amount of kids that will practice their faith, whether inconsistent. So about 75%, I believe, is what the the talk was about. Uh, But the decrease has even greatly occurred. Like you mentioned, I think it was 3% you mentioned, uh, will practice their faith continuously in in there, or or 33%, something like that was what you mentioned. I I don't remember 3% being that low. But uh, no, if the father is irregular and the mother's regular, three okay. yeah. percent or subsequent, yes. So yeah, if the if the dad is not there, there's a big disparity. There there's a big change and there's an effect in what your child does in the future. And so we're going to take a chance as we uh, to not take a chance, but go over the rest of this time and go over an article about what it takes to be a dad. And at the end of the day, we're going to wrap up and talk about what we can do within our own parish to get better at being dads, and to support each other as dads. So, before we get to that article, though, we had a great idea on the set this week since we're Mm -hmm. at Fatherhood. We got three dads as part of uh, our crew here this week. We're going to all discuss proud moments in our, in, as fatherhood. All right? Proud moments as fatherhood. (laughs) Got Rob, Alan, and myself. And so what we decided to do was give a quick little story about Hey, this is what we do. This is what makes us proud. And and, and as dads, we mm-hmm. kind of make guidelines of well, it doesn't have to be something special, spiritual. It can be if that's great. Uh, if not, it can just be a great parenthood moment. And so I'm going to be the first one to step in uh, this week since since we're out out in front, uh, Father Jason. Mm-hmm. And uh, my story, uh, as you know, because you've known me for a long time, but others, I grew up an outdoorsy kind of kid. Uh, we fish, hunt, we camped. And things, and, and so uh, with my daughters, I've tried to continue that tradition of the outdoors, the great outdoors, enjoying things for for what they are. Uh, and probably one of my proudest moments as a dad uh, was taking my eldest daughter uh, on her first hunting trip. Uh, the first time we went out hunting, she got to enjoy a morning and uh, of fellowship with not only just myself but three men that she absolutely loves and calls her uncles. We we enjoyed getting up early. Uh, you, you wouldn't think a five-year-old kid would want to roll out of bed at 5 a.m., but uh, when you mention, hey, you get to go places, not only with Dad but with your uncles, uh-huh. it, it, it's a great thing. And I remember the entire time she was just just thrilled. She got Not only because she got to go to Waffle House, but <laughs> it, it was a proud dad moment to see, you know what, she sees something that I absolutely love and, and and enjoy, and I get to share that with her. And now anytime we go fishing, anytime we go hunting, anytime we go camping, uh-huh. canoeing, and, and such, I see that not only just in her but her sister, and that we enjoy those times together and that we're, we're being proud dads and that I'm leading them in something that is going to stick with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, and that's just, for me, that's and it, it, what it's all about, about being a dad. And we'll, we'll discuss about the article, about the other spiritual aspects of it, but about being a dad is being present and enjoying time with your kids. And I think that's an extremely important part. No, oh, amen. Amen. Oh, well, we're, uh, as usual here, we've run a couple of weeks without some technical difficulties, but we, we're we up and back and going. We've been recording, but uh, the crew behind us has been making sure that everything's ahead of time and ready to go. And so... Uh, we were getting ready to transition there to a little quick break. We had to make sure things were getting fixed. So that's my story about how just the inspiration of uh, and, and the enjoyment of me spending time with my kids and being present. Um, to give us a little break so we can get prepped to go to our next segment, mm-hmm. we're going to go to Alan. And Alan's going to give us a quick story on him so we can take a deep breath. So, Rob, are we ready to take this over here? All right, Alan, let's hear your little short story, man. Thanks, Ben. We had to get camera four working. We were having issues, technical difficulties. I think we went to battery number three. Battery number three. Battery number three was the, was the, was the lucky one. Next to it, just feeding some Cheez-Its. Maybe that'll... Uh, so we have yeah. four He's going to run off to the kitchen again. Yeah. Luckily, he <laughs> ate 
earlier, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, my story is it's it's a it's a quick story. Um, it's about my daughter Mary Kate. Uh, she's the the child that made me a father um, right around Father's Day. So her birthday is actually coming up this Wednesday. She's going to be 16 years old, which is an amazing Ooh. amazing thing. You now have a family driver. Yes, and she's got a car too, which is awesome. Uh, and her birthday is the day after my dad's birthday, which is which is pretty cool too. Um, but the story is, um, when she was in second grade, she was signing up for a basketball league, which is a, one of the faith-based uh, basketball leagues here in Valdosta. And they had a questionnaire, even for the players in, in second grade, that level. She's nine years old. And uh, one of the questions on there was, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And we said, Mary-Kate, you answer any way you want to answer that. And she said, yes. She said, yes, checked it. And so the follow-up question was, if so, when did you do it? And she said, her reply was, every day. And so that that surprised us, but we were very we we're very proud of her answer. And uh, she turned in that paper, and we, we rolled on with the rest of the season. So it was a good time. But we were we were very proud, Amanda and I both, of, of Mary-Kate when she answered that way. Because she, she understood that it's uh, something that she's got to think about every day. It's not just a one-time deal. So that's my quick story. That's great. And that's a perfect situation. Uh, uh, when we talked about mine was something that enjoyed being present. Alan's story is something spiritual, enjoying the fact that his daughter has reached a point in her life of maturity and sees that the example that the parents set coming true. Amen. And that's a great thing to lead us into our article in. Uh, and so today, uh, when we went at this and you guys came to me and said, oh, Ben, let's put this one in your in your." Uh, in your area, you're a dad. You do these things. Let's let's let you lead the content. So I started pouring over different articles and different ideas, and I, and I stumbled upon this, and it came off a site uh, called uh, Those Catholic Men. Uh, it's a good little site. Everything on there is independently put on. Uh, you can you can write an article, and they'll send it to them, and if they approve it, they can go on and stuff. Uh, but it's all based on Catholic men, authors. Uh, there's book writers, there's priests, and all that that bring it on. Uh, well, the article that I found was called "A Checklist for Catholic Dads" by Randy Hain. Um, it's an excerpt and an article done on his book from the book "Journey to Heaven: A Roadmap for Catholic Men." And what it gives is seven different steps that we as dads, as Catholic dads, need to do in order to make sure we're fulfilling our vocation. I know we've talked about vocations for the last couple of weeks, but fulfilling the vocation of fatherhood is an important thing in order to keep up with those statistics like you had mentioned earlier, Father Jason. And so let's start getting into these seven things. The first one is surrender. And what he says here is we have to surrender on an ongoing basis to Christ for his will to be done in our lives. Guys, we're not in charge as much as we want to be. St. Ignatius of Loyola once said, Few souls understand what God would accomplish in them if they were to abandon themselves unreservedly to Him, and if they were to allow His grace to mold them accordingly. Man, right out there in front. No, exactly. It's, it's very humble because as men, you know, you want to be in charge and just be able to control things. And right away, the, the idea of surrendering is an act of humility. You know, show that, yeah, you're trying to be the man, but to be the man, well, in this case, you're not trying to beat the man, but emulate the man. Mm -hmm. And I just think, well, you just look at Jesus and the relationship he had with his heavenly father, uh, just taking those times to consult, to do his will, to make sure he was the right steps, you know, along with mom, with his mom, uh, too. But the idea of this surrendering, you know, this, it sounds countercultural. You just, you just want to grasp me, control, but just to know that sometimes that we as men, it, it, it's okay. Yeah. You know, the man. Yeah, you know, and got us. to me, the humility here and, and, and the example shown here, the best earthly example, like you mentioned, it is countercultural, but the breath, er, best earthly example is St. Joseph for us. You talk about a man who showed humility, that originally he was going to look at Mary and, and, and give her away and, and say, be done with this. But then when the angel came to him and said, this is your job and this is your father, that you're going to lead the Son of Man, he took it, and you talk about humility and showing and surrendering his will to God. I mean, this is a great step one. No, exactly. And also, too, just think of when it comes to surrendering, 
he everything that he did that had to do in trusting these big things came from dreams. He had three big dreams, you know, between the, the take Mary his wife that he was going to flee to Nazareth, you know, et cetera. So, uh, like, like wow. Yeah, so it's you can be a leader and you can be the man, like fleeing, and you can also be the humble man of understanding that this is your role, and that you have to do this to fulfill a vaca- uh, vocation. Amen. And uh, being the man is the next part. Be a man of prayer. Right? Randy mentions in here, our children will be much more likely to pray if we do. Work on developing a daily prayer routine with the goal of at least an hour a day devoted to prayer. It does sound difficult. Think about how much TV we watch a day or time spent answering emails. Consider how much time we spent in our cars each day and how much time we devote to exercise. We have more than enough time to pray if we schedule it, if we integrate it into our day. Imagine the powerful influence we can have on our children if they see us on our knees in prayer each night at family prayer time. I mean, Father, we, we've discussed prayer. Yes. But the important of, importance of an example of prayer is, is a great thing to do. No, exactly. Uh, you know, while prepping for this show, just looking at how many rich sites and blogs that are out there, resources for men, uh, because um, when it comes to the, you know, the church, you know, stereotypically now, I mean, how often do we see men assuming even leadership roles in the church? You know, and I think uh, men need to realize that what, uh, even when it comes, we, we like to see others like see these men like leading it in action we want we emulate men be, uh, become some of our heroes and role models and just think if you're a little kid how humbling it is to see your dad you know like actually want to go back to the first point kind of surrendering like on his knees actually praying or as you walk into church the importance of getting trying to get there on time and uh, making sure that, that, that you, how, how you're dressed and how you carry yourself at church you know, they, they might expect, you know, mom to pop them one or shush them, but just to see the dad's action, the mom puts it in maybe the words, but just watching the dad show reverence also. Uh, again, it sounds kind of countercultural again, but that's just how important it is, uh, the being a man of prayer. Uh, it goes into, like, your kids, like, what they see you do or don't do will be what they will do or yeah, not do. Setting an example, yeah. a great thing. Uh, and reading up for this show as well, I read a story about a kid named Carol in Poland about one of the stories that he always used to say about prayer Mm -hmm. was that he saw his dad pray, especially after his mom passed away. He saw his dad praying and kneeling and discussing every day. And we may know who that famous name is. Yes. That that, that young man was in Poland, you said, right? Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So St. Pope John Paul II, getting it out there. Yes. Yeah. A great example of he saw his dad on his knees praying. Uh, and being a man of prayer. Now, we understand that creating uh, habits is an important thing. There's the old statistic, it takes 21 days to create a habit. Gentlemen, we've now been running for three weeks straight. I think we've created a habit that Monday through Friday, one of us is going to continue to have to drag some of us out of the bed all the time, but we've created a habit of running, (laughs) and it feels good. It's a great thing to have exercise. I missed y'all this morning. <laughs> Monday through Friday, Rob. Monday through Friday, Monday right? Through Friday. <laughs> Come on. But we've created a habit. In that same amount of time, we can create a habit of prayer. We can create a habit of personal prayer, an importance of personal prayer, but we can also create a, a habit of family prayer. And I know we've mentioned as we've gone on with this show, uh, especially through these pandemic times, some of us have learned to create more of a habit of family prayer, and it's important. We've learned to enjoy those things. Um. The next point on here, Father Jason, uh-huh. uh, says to go understand our true vocation. It says, for those of us blessed to be married and have children, we must recognize that helping our families get to heaven and being good husbands and fathers, not our business careers, is our real vocation. Ask yourself, is, this my, is my work serving my family or is my family serving my work? <laughs> yeah. What, what strong words right wow. there. Understanding a vocation. Uh, I had some thought, and I just it, it, it just came. We must recognize families get to heaven. Father, you mentioned in an earlier episode, going back to the old Baltimore Catechism, how are we made, or why are we made? You know, we said to know, love, and serve God, you know, so we'll be yeah. forever happy with Him in the next. Yeah, exactly. Understanding that this is our true voca- vocation here. We as fathers, our job is not only to help our wife get to heaven, but to help our kids get to heaven. 
I mean, this is a strong point. And that, that asking yourself, is my work serving my family, or is my family serving my work? I mean, wow, Father Jason, do you have any comments on that one? No, I would say that as for a church, we just try to put things out there to help facilitate. Um, again, we, we, we try to help prepare for marriage prep. We try to have different fraternal groups uh, to help out there. Uh, like locally right now, we have, uh, we have like, I guess, our Knights of Columbus. We have the Evangeliz- Evangelization Committee. Maybe we might be starting something new in our parish. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but um, I just think sometimes, you know, men need outlets to talk to other men just to help to hold them accountable uh, about their uh, how they're prioritizing faith and work because you're living in the moment uh, when you're there with your family that sometimes you don't have that time to stop and think. So sometimes we do allow, we might have like a parish retreat or have these different, uh, during especially in Lent and Advent, these different missions or chance to hopefully to have everybody in their different states of life come and hear a talk that meets them on those levels. They can kind of do it. But, you know, like right now we're just overstimulated. So it, um, sometimes you might be caught up so much in work so you can help provide sustenance for your family. Mm-hmm. But you might be meeting them on that level, but they might be something they're missing on a more intimate, present level. Yeah. So, I mean, this, I know the struggle is real. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned retreat. I had a conversation with a gentleman from Savannah this week, and I believe there's makes of a diocesan men's conference in our own Savannah Diocese. Oh, I believe wow. that that's in the works for it. I, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I know that the other dioceses around us have offered them, uh, and we haven't yet had a group go from St. John's that I know of, but I'd love to get us going on those things, especially uh, yeah. for dads in our area. So yeah. those kinds of things. All right, so before we take a quick little break, let's go over this last one right here. Okay. All right, um, invest time. And I mentioned this one earlier. Uh, when it came to my story. Our children need our time. Put down the smartphone, turn off the TV, cancel the golf outing. Let's spend more time with our kids. In the absence of a father's time with his family, you can bet there are countless bad influences ready to take his place and to guide his children in the wrong direction. I paraphrase an author, theologian Scott Hahn, who wrote that in our modern age, the father or mother who is willing to walk out of the office after 40 hours in order to ta- to have more time with his or her family is the real hero. Now, investing time is important. Uh, I myself work a job that's 60 plus hours a week, sometimes during season. And I understand that investing time is an extremely, being present in the moment when you're home is key. Because if you're not, you're going you're gonna to start falling not only yourself going to start falling into bad habits but your kids will i mean it's a it's a real thing of investing time and one of the people somebody's asked me before uh when it comes to taking my kids out to the ball field and stuff with me uh especially during the summertime well, well, why don't you want to get a babysitter so why not why, why not bring my kids my kids love being at the ballpark uh, I got kids that love riding the drag on the field. They want to be able to drag the dirt just as much as Daddy loves dragging the dirt. Huh. They want to be able to to hop on the mower and say, "Hey, guess what I did today? I hopped on Daddy's mower and we we cut grass for a couple minutes on my field." Or, "Hey, this week they were running the wheelbarrow around the infield because the grass got tall because all the rain, and they're picking up chunks of grass." I mean, that's a job that they, what what other kids? But they see, you know what? Daddy loves this, and that I invest time with them and spending time with them because they know, "Hey, guess what? At the end of the day." We're going to end up having fun and talk on the way back, and we'll probably stop somewhere and get some ice cream or get something fun. (laughs) Or Waffle House. Yeah, yeah, somewhere good, something good to eat (laughs) on the way home. But it's at those times, investing time, TV doesn't count, but investing time and spending time, we've started playing family game night. We've started having friends games nights. Investing those times with not only your your family and your community, they're important things. Exactly. One thing I'll just add is, uh, you remember those MasterCard commercials? You know, like they go, priceless uh i just know for like for my from my me and my dad in general i just remember back in uh around 2000 2001 uh my dad would always have me look up on the internet who won the poll for the nascar race so i always knew my dad liked nascar i was always following nascar but i always had to follow you know look up who was on the poll he goes no son that's the order which they're qualifying for the poll no that was the practice speeds i told you to look up the poll how to race <laughs> I, I wasn't nascar litter if you could believe that um back in, but but it was through getting to know that i was like you know this is very important for my you know i want to watch one you know then i finally watched a daytona 500 and just watching that i was like oh wow like so that's what it means how they speed that's what it means to have that and my dad, if you like doing that well, how about going to one live 
So um, the first race I went to going to uh, Atlanta was the one in which uh, Jeff Gordon won the championship, I believe. I think Bobby Labonte won the race that day. Uh, I thought it was cool. Like, yay, I'm going to get a fourth row seat on the start-finish line. Yeah, if you're on the fourth row in a NASCAR race, you, you get all the tire rubber. <laughs> yeah, you want to sit higher up. So <laughs> I was only glued in to a little bit of what I could see. Um, but it was pretty cool for what I could, and then all the smell and exhaust. Then we learned how to do it better. But I was just thinking all the what all went into it and all that, and it's like, but it was this time I got to have with my dad. So um, that was something. That, uh, Most of the time you were sure. getting polls, it was probably Joe Nemechek because he went by the nickname of Front Row Joe. Joe, right? he, he was big during that day yeah. uh, too. Yeah. All right, so before we hit the last three uh, important part, points from this article, we're going to roll to our producer here. He's going to give us a little break from chatting, right. and he's going to give us a story about fatherhood. A Rob. story? Dun, dun, dun. Lord, I don't know if I could uh, Official title, it town story. Yeah. Well, being that I have the most children here, <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a very good Catholic, and I have four children. Uh, my oldest, Carter, is 12. Uh, the middle child, uh, Olivia, is about to be nine and then we have the twins and you know i'm a cop out and i say uh i cannot narrow it down to one story <laughs> but you know the twins are 10 months old and just n seeing over the past 10 months how my older children i mean i'm i'm blessed to say that they really helped me with the younger you t two children and they you know they'll go get bottles they'll watch them and you know they'll treat them they'll play with them you know carter 12 year old boy you'd think he's probably not you know down with two twin girls but you know he loves on them and kisses them and tells them that he loves them you know uh olivia she might pout about it but you know this morning she was you know we're playing uh, Go Find the Bottles, huh. and, she, <laughs> and, she's, <laughs> and she's finding bottles, you know, under couches and in cribs and, and things like that. And so <laughs> Maya hid those, right? Not, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dog. Oh, oh, so <laughs> we just, uh, you know, it's been a true blessing to have two more children, which w we didn't plan on. But, uh, you know, seeing the older kids take care of them, I'm like, wow. And you know what? I don't know if I, I did, had anything to do with that. It might have been all Crystal, <laughs> uh, you know, because she's she's the, the one who, you know, teaches us, you know, how to be good people. <laughs> yeah. And that brings up a great point. We should cheers this to our wives. Yes. Our wives deal with us making this show weekly. Our wives deal with us yeah. uh, on a daily basis for whatever stuff we put them through. This Father Day is not only special for us, but it's special for you. We love you guys, and we, we appreciate everything you guys do for us as dads. But on the on being Catholic, the one thing I, I can say I'm proud of my daughter is, and she, she's a better Catholic than I am, because she enjoys going to confession. Huh. She asks, and this has been hard on her for, uh, you know, Corona, because she always wants to go to confession. And so... I, uh, you know, what she teaches me, and sometimes, uh, you know, they'll have confession, and she'll be like, let's go, and then, you know, we'll go, and she'll say, what about you, Dad? And I'll be like, mm. okay, we're going to be here for another hour, but, you know. <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's my stories. Well, I got a great lead into that one, because the next point on our article, again, uh, this week we've been talking about fatherhood, uh, and I pulled an article called A Checklist for Catholic Dads by Randy Hain off of the website Those Catholic Men. Uh, it's seven points talking about what us as Catholic dads uh, that we need to follow and we need to lead us as being good leaders of our family, faith-based wise. And the first four points we talked about, surrender, being humil showing humility, being a man of prayer, understanding our true vocation, mm -hmm. and investing time. Well, this one goes right after what Rob talked about here is being courageous, right? Being courageous. Christians are meant to stand out, not blend in. Blending in speaks to conforming so that our faith becomes part of the mainstream. We need to fight the culture. These are difficult times, and we have a responsibility to love and defend Christ. 
be great role models for our family, and stand up for our faith. What a great point, and what an important point. Uh, being courageous is, is leadership in itself. You know, no, exactly, because even going back to Rob's story, just while he go to, just goes to the fact of, um, you know, again, they're watching what you do or don't do. And p- part of being courageous or, or being a man is, if you don't take the time to teach your kids things about the faith or their practices, the world will. What better way than to have a father or a father figure than having the world? Or now, so, um, yes, we do need yeah. that the, the virtue. Yeah, of we talked about culture virtue. taking in and taking on, especially we, when we said invest time. I mean, if, if you're not investing time, who is investing time? Hmm. Well, it's time to be courageous at the same time. Taking that time to invest in them. Taking the time to invest in your family and be courageous. Be the opposite example of what we see on television. Be the opposite uh, of what social media tells us to be. Be the Christian man that leads. Be the Christian man that shows. And be that leader that's what's needed in your family, in your parish, and in the world. I mean, those are extremely important points. Yes. Yeah. Which I would, I would like to, you know, kind of interject this. You know, what do we consider successful these days? I think men and society in general, I'm not successful because I don't have a lot of money. I'm not successful because, you know, I work nine to five. But the way we gauge success, well, I'm successful because I have, you know, great children who love, you know, Jesus Christ. I'm a great, uh, very successful because I have a wife who loves me, you know. Things like that, you know, if you make a million dollars and you've been divorced three times and you have three kids that you don't talk to, is that success? You know? And so a lot of times we get caught up in materialism and money and houses and cars. What makes you successful as a man? And what is going to be your legacy? And that's extremely, I mean, there's the old song quote, you can't take with it when, when you're dead. You can't take it with you when you're dead. Uh, what you can is, is take the legacy and take on the fact that you've led your family to heaven. You've mm-hmm. led your wife. You've led your children. That's the legacy that you want. You want your grandkids to come out and say, man, that man was a great man because he helped my mom and dad. He helped my grandmother lead us to where we are today. And that's that's what you want your legacy to be. You want to be that great man that discusses. I think that's a great point, Rob, that you, you, you point there. Uh, that's great. Uh, the next one, number six here. All right. Practice detachment. And this one almost goes with this. Are we too, f- that we just talked about, are we too focused on acquiring toys, bigger houses, nicer cars, or the next promotion? We need to let go of the things that are in the way of our prayer lives, mass attendance, charitable giving, volunteering, time with our family, and certainly our relationship with Christ. Practice detachment. Yeah, do you control your possessions, or do your possessions control you? Yeah. Again, I think it's a natural instinct for men to want to be a provider and to want to have the best, you know, uh, you know, to carry on for their namesake and their family, and to defend, you know, for the family's honor. But at the same time, but you know, uh, we're hitting, but at what cost, you know, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. for everything? But but in one sense, it's like you know, be able to prioritize. So that detachment is being like, going back to some of those other points it was making earlier. Um, you know, just be able to live in the world, living in the moment, being present. Yeah, yeah being present. And I think one point that we haven't quite made is uh, the importance of the sacraments. Uh, like it said in here, mass attendance, charitable giving, uh, relationship with Christ is providing the sacraments to the children. Like Rob mentioned, is taking Olivia to, to confession, being at mass, uh, going to adoration, practicing all the sacraments that we can and influencing their lives uh, we've mentioned this when we've talked about vocations, but prayer life mm-hmm. leading to uh, vocations uh, in the holy orders. Both people that we were, were our main highlights, both Sister Nula and uh, um, Father Pablo talked about it as well, was the leading of prayer life. And you yourself talked about the same thing. Uh, of fa- that, that family and that prayer led to vocations uh, of holy orders. I mean... What part of this and, and the sacraments is not an important key? 
Amen. Yeah. All right. The last thing, and we've mentioned this one, and this one's certainly not the least, but probably one of the most important. Love our wives. Husbands, we must love and cherish our wives. Plain and simple. Our children will learn to love others by how they see mom and dad love each other. We need to say, I love you to our wives and our children as often as possible. Let's show our wives respect and cherish the critical role they play in our families. The most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother, so said Theodore Hesburgh. Father, I know you're a priest, but do you have any thoughts on that one? Well, first and foremost, we know that right now, due to COVID-19, a lot of people early on spent a lot of time at home. And unfortunately, when some families, I guess things aren't working out the best, and, you know, we saw some rise in some things in certain crimes. But also, we also saw a rise in, in, in men needing to get out of the house and, and for specific things for them to do, like even around our own church or whatnot. A lot of people started spending so much time, but it was a chance to take a snapshot where things are at. Some good fruits that came that people gather as a family to watch, perhaps mass. But as much time as people were spending together and all these different personalities, what I will share this when it comes to loving your wives is just making sure that if things ever did get tense in these past couple of months that we've been doing, uh, been a part of this uh, COVID-19, is making sure that your home, again, is a confessional and not a courtroom. All too often, it's easy for a spouse to face another spouse as if they're given opening and closing arguments about something that went on. Whereas in sometimes there differences do occur, things occur in a marriage, but you can just take a step back, especially if the kids are watching, and treat it like a confessional. Take some time to cool off, and then the family watching how you come back together and deal with a particular situation. You know, sorry, honey, I got over here this day, or I'm dealing with the pressure of this, just to have that dialogue and come together so again i would just say when it comes to how you treat your wife and knowing that the kids are watching it's just making sure that as your home especially now moving forward that you're proactive and that your home is a confessional you know admitting faults and trying to grow in virtue instead of i'm right you're wrong you know as if your home is a courtroom and your children are the judges or something makes sense i like that point well father that's seven points that's an article it 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 boomed to me. I was going, and I was at probably 10 or 15 articles, going back and forth, reading different ones. But that one stuck out to me the most, giving those seven basic things, those seven ideas to us that what we as Catholic dads need. I mean, there, there's other things out there you mentioned earlier. There's so many in which I, I myself am guilty. I didn't know there was so much out there for us as Catholic men and Catholic dads, but there's so much out there for us. Uh, if, if you're a Twitter fan, there's Twitter stuff out there, Catholic dads, Catholic gentlemen, uh, those kinds of things out there to supply daily things. Right now, we're interacting right now. Let's type that right now. Can you mm. see it right now? We just posted the links to those things right <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll make sure we share this those, those Catholic men website. Uh, there's other Catholic outside. All you got to do is put the search forward. And it's there to help. I know. I see some people are putting some right now that I had not even heard of right now. <laughs> but again, we're building a database together. Thank you, Titletown fans. Yeah. Thank you. Well, with the end of this comes, I think, a pretty good announcement. Uh, myself and a couple other dads of our parish have been discussing longer than just a little bit of time, but have been discussing we need a dad's group. We need a group for men. To, to learn about Christ, to become better examples of being a man and a Christ-like man. And so we've been working, and we're, we're putting together the idea and looking at starting uh, about the time the school starts back up, but a men's group. Uh, this men's group will be focused on a weekly meeting, have a meal, have some time to spend together in fellowship and, and discussion and, and a lesson, but growing in our faith. And so our announcement putting out, we're starting it. Look for it with the Saint John in St. John's. It'll be in the bulletin. Uh, hopefully soon when we're, we're, things are getting better and we can get out to Mass and we can get the word out beyond the bulletin. But look for those ima- uh, announcements. Uh, it's called That Man Is You. Uh, it's, a, it's a program that's out there. It's done in our diocese. It's done in dioceses. Uh, the more I research it, all over the United States and even uh, in, into Canada and some places in Europe. Uh, but... It's a great-looking program, and I can't wait to be a part of it. No, I would say for right now, I would just encourage uh, parishioners right now of St. John's just to um, just to pray for this. 
the pray because when something good happens, the evil one likes to throw obstacles uh, along the way. So just pray uh, that you know we can get this t- together for the men of the parish, and that some can move forward. Uh, we will start off somewhere. And I know some of you right now that are watching are like, "Wait a minute, we're part of one." Please comment right now. Tell us about what it's like to be involved in that program. Um, so some men, taking the, we're asking people to pray about it, but some men might be shy about the steps it takes to get involved. Uh, and that, that's somewhat natural, but let's not get into that yet. But just baby steps right now. Is this exciting? You know, I mean that there's a group of you in the parish that have been talking about wanting to get men together for fellowship accountability, and that can only just help strengthen your families. And support. And support. support. Yeah, yeah, it's a great thing. We, we have to have support. I mean, not only, it takes a village and it takes a community, and, and what a perfect way to do it is through our parish. Um, That's awesome. I know we haven't mentioned this throughout the show, but make sure you share this. Uh, this is going to be a great show. This was a great content, some great discussion. Uh, we were very vulnerable in telling stories, I think. I think it was a great show, but make sure you're sharing this. Hit the share button. Like, go to our Title Town Theology uh, page, like it, and folks, like we mentioned last week, we got even more exciting news coming out soon. More, more exciting news when it comes to this show. Uh, we're reaching levels that I, I don't know 13 weeks ago if we thought about, but we are extremely excited the direction this show is headed and uh, looking forward to future guests. Father Jason, the names just keep getting bigger, man. I know. Uh, it's, and again, the more people are talking about us, the more we can have that further reach. And before we forget to, producers, anything to share or note? Like, share, subscribe. That's right. And I would like to say one thing. Alan is really not this short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a taller chair. Yes. Wow. Thank uh, you, Rob. Because I got a couple boards here. Alan he was feeling a little self-conscious about his mm, his height there. The logo said, fits, though, under my head. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so... Father Jason, you want to wrap us up for us tonight? Yes, like so. Right now, I also want to give a, a prayer, uh, the blessing I traditionally give at Mass on uh, Father's Day, and of course, this goes to any man that plays the role of a father. So I now give this prayer: Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our Father, in Your wisdom and love, You've made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may always honor them with a spirit of profound respect. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All so right. Another week done, another week down. We hope you guys enjoyed this content. Dads out there, enjoy a great Father's Day. We wish all of our, our own dads and grandfathers out there a Father's Day. Uh, We'll see you guys when we get back from our vacation next week, being live. Some great discussion. Look out for the teaser on that week. See you guys later. Thank you. For your presence in here, in his name I find, in his name I find, in his name. There was no